Praise the Lord. We're glad that you're here tonight. This is Pastor Randy Richardson with the Bible Heritage Pentecostal Holiness Church, and we just want to welcome you to the service tonight. Let's start off by singing a song that says, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I hope your mind is staying on the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, I woke up this morning with presence now but being able to see him face to face when he comes in the clouds of glory and takes us all that are right with God up to be with him in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord hallelujah <laughs> Oh, 
go into a city where there'll be no more night, the Lord Jesus will light up the whole city. Hallelujah. The trumpet's going to sound and I'm going to be called away. I'm going to a city someday.
into a city. Hallelujah. We're continuing tonight in our study in the book of 1 John. We're going to look at chapter 2 beginning in verse number 18 and going through verse 23. 1 John chapter 2, beginning in verse number 18, going through verse 22. Tonight I've entitled this message, Who is Antichrist? Who is the Antichrist? Let's read the scripture. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now, many antichrists have come. Let me say that again. Many antichrists has, have come. But now go back. You have heard that antichrist is coming. Even now, many antichrists have come. By which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written you because you do not know the truth, but because you do know it. And there is no lie, that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar? But he who denies that Jesus is the Christ, he is Antichrist, who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. Either He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. If you have been in church any time at all, you have heard the term Antichrist. If you read the Left Behind series books or if you see, have seen the Left Behind series on the movie, in movies, then you have seen the portrayal of the Antichrist in movies. There are dozens of Christian movies that depict the role of the Antichrist in the end times. You will hear all types of theories about the Antichrist on Facebook and YouTube. You just Google the name Antichrist and you'll see every kind of theory known to man. But I'm here to tell you that no matter what you uh, think about it, you need to get your information from this book and not from Facebook. You need to get it from the Bible. You need to get your, your messages from the Lord and not from some man that uh, has a new theory. When I was a kid, my grandfather believed that Mussolini was the Antichrist. He would tell me, he said, when I was growing up, because he was born in 1906 and Mussolini was the, the uh, uh, president, I guess, or emperor, whatever term they used at that time of, of Italy and my grandfather believed, as most people did, that the Antichrist was going to come from Italy and, and, and at that time. And, and uh, so he believed that, that uh, Mussolini was the Antichrist. But then as, as Mussolini died, he never did become the ruler of the world and start the tribulation. Then uh, people believed it was Hitler. Uh, and then my grandfather, in his older age, he believed that Henry Kissinger was the Antichrist, who was the uh, Secretary of State under uh, President Richard Nixon. I've heard recently, and in the last few years, that Barack Obama was the Antichrist. I saw yesterday where somebody posted all kind of reasons, and they pulled all kind of scriptures to try to prove that Donald Trump was the Antichrist. And I've heard people say that Bill Gates was the Antichrist and Prince Harry and, and the, the, every single pope that's been in office since I was born. I know 
uh, preachers that are accusing them of being the Antichrist. And, and, and uh, there's even compelling argument out there that the president of France, uh, Emmanuel Macron, could be the Antichrist. Well, I really don't know that any of those people are the Antichrist. However, since the time of the disciples, different men have operated under the influence of the spirit of Antichrist. As I read in our text, many Antichrists have come. We have a lot of people that operate in a spirit of Antichrist. Um, Nero was the emperor of the Roman Empire and persecuted the church and Many of the New Testament believers thought that Nero had to be the Antichrist. He certainly operated in the spirit of Antichrist, but he was not the Antichrist. When President Obama came into office, you have to admit whether you liked him or you didn't like him, he came from obscurity. He, he just showed up on the scene. He was a senator for about two years, and all of a sudden now he's running for president and and with no experience other than being a community organizer, uh, he is now the president of the United States. And right after he gets into office, all of a sudden he wins the Nobel Peace Prize for nothing because he's done nothing at that point. And, and, and then people just oohed and awed and, and every word he said that was just like uh, honey dripping off of his lips and, and, and people were just so caught up in him. And I couldn't understand it because politically he's on the wrong side of the spectrum, especially for God's people. And uh, I, I couldn't understand why people were so enamored with him. But then I, I felt like that he was a picture or a foreshadow of what the Antichrist will be. Because people will fall to the Antichrist. But I don't believe President Obama was the Antichrist. He operated a lot of times in the spirit of Antichrist when he came against the church and God's people, when he pr promoted same-sex marriage and he promoted uh, uh, homosexuality, lesbianism, and all these other things that are against the church, wanting to force the church uh, to, to uh, perform same-sex marriages and things of this nature. And so, you know, it was, he was just operating in that spirit of Antichrist and gave us a picture of how people will be that gullible. And if you don't believe gullible, you know, why would people vote in a man like uh, uh, Joseph Biden to be our president unless they were, uh, you know, just under an influence uh, in, in their minds? Uh, up, up from the Antichrist spirit. They should have voted in one of the other candidates in the Democratic Party uh, instead of, of him. He's not even, not even all there. But let's see what the Bible has to say about the Antichrist. And let's form some opinions about him. Uh, I, I've had uh, folks uh, send me messages a lot of people are confused because on Facebook you'll see where uh, people are saying that uh, Bill Gates has to be the Antichrist and they and they form all of their uh, little Bible tidbits to, to try to make that 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 case and uh, but I want I want you to see what the Bible has to say about this subject. I first of all believe that the Antichrist, is born right now. I believe that he's either a child or a teenager or an adult, um, an older man. I don't know exactly how old he is, but I believe in all my heart that he is here right now. I believe he's on the scene, possibly some political figure around the world. Maybe he's being groomed in one of our colleges right now in the United States. I don't know. But I know this, I believe with all my heart that he is ready because the coming of the Lord is at hand. Jesus is coming back right now. He's coming back anytime. And so the Antichrist has to be ready to step in power once the rapture takes place. 
Let's go into the Bible. Turn with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And I'm going to try to back up everything I'm saying with the word of God. And here, here's, here's the thing you need to remember. If you can't find scripture for it, and I mean scripture that is just plain as the nose on your face, and, and you don't just realize maybe it's speculation and not truth, and you've got to hold the truth, and you can enjoy thinking about speculation, but speculation is never pure gospel. Okay, it's never pure truth. So don't argue over speculation. You say, well, that's your opinion. I'll keep mine and go on. Now let's look at 2 Thessalonians 2, starting in verse 1. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, the rapture of the church, glory to God, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of, the, of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means. For that day, the rapture of the church, will not come unless the falling away comes first. If you don't believe that the church has fallen away, you're living in a bubble. Because God's people don't pray. God's people don't read the word. God's people don't come to church, especially now since coronavirus has taken place. A lot of folks have don't even watch the service online. They've just gotten where they're living their lives absent of God. And so we're seeing a great falling away. Don't be caught up in that. Keep your nose in the book. Keep your, your knees on the floor. Pray. Read the word. Worship God. Spend time with his people. Worship online if you can't be in the house of the Lord. Make sure you're getting some spiritual food. Hallelujah. It says, and even more, or, or uh, let me back up will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed. So we know now that the Antichrist is a man. We know he's not a woman. He's a man. The son of perdition. That's another name for the Antichrist. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God. Or that is worship so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So we've already seen the great falling away. It's continuing day by day, year by year to fall away. Next thing to happen is the temple has to be rebuilt. You say, what do you mean? Well, there was a temple that Solomon built, and then later on after that was destroyed, the Jewish people built a second temple, the one that Jesus actually went into in and out. And, uh, and, and that was destroyed in 70 AD. And the Jewish people have not had a temple since that time. And uh, there are plans that are already in place. There are Levi, Levi's that are uh, already or from the tribe of Levi, the Levites, they're already being trained on how to do all of the sacrifices and the showbread and the incense and all of the things that were in the tabernacle and the temple. They're already being trained. They already go through uh, practices on a regular basis and, and uh, they're just waiting on, on some uh, governmental, political thing to happen that will allow them to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. And so a lot of theologians believe that the Antichrist will facilitate that, that he will allow the, the uh, Jews and the uh, Muslims to come together and build that temple in Jerusalem on the Temple Mount. But we know this, the Antichrist will not be set up as God until the temple's built. So if somebody comes forward today and says, well, I'm the Antichrist, will you say, well, you, 
We don't have the temple built, so people are not going to be worshiping you until we get the temple built. So, anyway, verse 5. Do not, do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, and now you know what is re restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. There's going to be a time where the Antichrist is revealed. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he's taken out of the way. Now, what's he talking about there? The Antichrist is being restrained, held back from doing all the things that he wants to do so desperately. And the reason he's being held back, or the one that's holding him back, is the Holy Spirit. But when the church is raptured up, and we're all caught up together in the clouds to be with the Lord forever, when we go up, the Holy Spirit goes with us because he resides in us. He doesn't reside in buildings. He resides in people. So when the church goes up in the rapture, the Holy Spirit will go with us. And then the, the man of lawlessness, the antichrist, the beast, whatever you want to call him, he's going to be unleashed to do exactly what he's supposed to do in his time. Then verse 8 says, and then the lawless one will be revealed. Then he'll be revealed. After the Holy Spirit's taken out, after the rapture of the church takes place, then he will be revealed. So if somebody says, oh, I know who he is now, they're just speculating because he will not be revealed until, according to the Bible there, until the, until the Holy Spirit has been removed. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. In other words, all his power comes from the devil with all power, signs, and lying wonders and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. People are going to be under a great delusion, just like I said earlier about President Obama. So many people had just a strong delusion. It was just a glimpse of what's going to happen during the time of, of the Antichrist. People are going to be under a great delusion. There are many, many scriptures in the book of Daniel, in the book of Revelation that talk about the Antichrist. And I'm not going to get into all of those. I'm just going to give you an overview tonight. But let me stop right here and say you cannot receive the mark of the beast, the mark of the Antichrist. It's called the mark of the beast, but the Antichrist is another name for the beast. You cannot receive the mark of the beast until the Antichrist is revealed. And we know from what we just read in the scripture that you can't get, uh, the, the, the Antichrist is not going to be revealed until the Holy Spirit's taken away. So there's no way, don't ever worry that you're taking the mark of the beast unknowingly for, for several reasons. One, God will never allow his children to be deceived to go to hell. No way. No way. God is not willing that any should perish. He's, he's not going to allow you to be tricked. In fact, when you take the mark of the beast, it's because you have made an informed decision. An informed decision. Amen. So, People are spouting off that if you take the coronavirus vaccine, you're taking the mark of the beast. And they try to use Greek words and whatever to say that the mark is a scratch. And, 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 and you know, when you get that needle to go in, you've scratched open your skin and a and, and bunch of foolishness like that. And folks, that's not the mark of the beast. They're not going to implant some little chip in your hand unless you give your permission for something like that. You know, we do it for animals. We put a chip in there so we can find them if they get lost. 
I think it's a, 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 a system that eventually we'll see uh, probably uh, even before the Antichrist where some people, because uh, we're seeing it in some places where they'll put a chip in their hand so that they can, you know, Alzheimer's uh, folks, they can find them and so forth. But even that, I don't believe it's the mark of the beast. It's not the mark of the beast. It might be a way that they can track you if you don't take the mark of the beast. But they can do that with your cell phone right now. They can find you any place you're at. But here's, here's the thing. The mark of the beast is a definite mark that will be put on your forehead or on your for, uh, on your hand to show your allegiance to the Antichrist. So it's it's not it's going to be something that folks can readily see to report you if you don't have the mark. Okay, and Revelation thirteen sixteen through eighteen says. He causes us all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here's wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast for it's the number of man. His number is 666. We're not going to have tattooed on our head 666. It's going to be a mark that shows that you belong to him. You know, much like uh, the Nazis had the swastika that showed that, that you were a Nazi. Uh, you were of German um, persuasion. And, and, and that's going to be the same type of thing with the Antichrist. You're going to have some sort of mark. Uh, we don't know what that is. I don't really care what that is. I just know I'm not going to ever, when I'm given an informed decision to take the mark of the beast, if I were if I were a lost person and I didn't make it in the rapture and I'm still here during the tribulation and I have to take that mark, I'm not going to, I wouldn't do it. I've told my unsaved children, if, if, if daddy goes in the rapture and we're gone, and you're left behind, don't you take the mark. I know you won't be able to buy or sell. You'll starve to death. But I'd rather starve to death and make it into heaven. I would make sure during the tribulation, if you live and you go through the tribulation and, and, and you're confronted about the mark of the beast, if you refuse it, they're going to take off your head. Well, I'd rather lose my head and make it into heaven than I had to live here with the mark and go to hell. The mark of the beast is a literal mark. It will identify you as a worshiper of the Antichrist, the beast. So stop worrying about the vaccine. If you don't want to take the vaccine because of medical reasons and you don't like vaccines and things like that, that that's okay for you to feel that way. But don't not take it because you think it's the mark of the beast or something of that nature. That's foolishness. Now, Jimmy Swaggart made a statement about the Antichrist that I found as an interesting speculation. And again, it's speculation. He believes that the Antichrist will be half Jewish and half Muslim. In other words, maybe a Jewish daddy and a Muslim mother or a Muslim daddy and a Jewish mother, whatever but half Jewish and half Muslim. He says that the only way the Jews will trust the Antichrist is for him to be Jewish. And the only way for the Muslims to trust him is for them to be Muslim. And so it would make a lot of sense uh, for the Antichrist to be uh, of that uh, nationality. He'd be able to broker a deal among the, allowing the temple to be built and and the Jews would trust him and the Muslims would trust him. And, and then at some point he would turn on the Jews and take the side of the Muslims. And, and, and then he would sit on the uh, a throne there in the temple to receive worship. Others teach and believe that the Antichrist is going to be a Gentile. Will not be a Jew or a Muslim, but be a Gentile. 
Revelation 13, 1. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Over in Revelation 17, 15, it said, Then he said to me, The waters which you saw where the harlot sits are, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. And so anytime somebody comes from the sea, it's, it's uh, generally a reference to a person that is of Gentile descent. The bottom line is we don't know. We just don't know. And, and, and frankly, I, I don't really care because I'm going to be gone. Hallelujah. I'm right with God and I'm going to go up in the clouds and meet the Lord in the air and so shall I ever be with the Lord. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be taken up in the rapture. I'm not going to be around to meet the old boy, so I, I don't I don't know. But just those that are left behind are the ones that need to be worried, need to be concerned. I want to say this, God's people. Please, please, please be careful when listening to people preach on end times. Most of it has changed multiple times with each generation. When I was young, I used to follow Bible prophecy uh, a lot, and I listened to all the teachers, and they all said one thing, and they all said something else, and then next thing I know, 10 years go by, and they're saying something different, and 10 years go by, and there's something different. So honestly, when you hear people preach on Bible prophecy, take it with a grain of salt, Make sure that you read behind the person. Write down those scriptures and read for yourself. I was listening to a minister preach about the Antichrist as I was trying to study for this message. I thought I'd listen to somebody that I thought uh, might knew something a little more than me. So I, I listened to a bunch of different sermons. Wasn't impressed with any of them, not any of them. Uh, and here's why. This fellow quoted from Daniel chapter 7 and verse 23. Now, here's what he said. He said, now, in Daniel 7, 23, the Antichrist will come from a future nation, a nation with the ability to dominate and destroy the world. It will be a superpower with nuclear capability, and the national symbol of this nation will be an eagle. Now, that's four statements that he made, quoting Daniel. Didn't even read the text, just said Daniel 7, 23. Now, let me read you Daniel 7, 23. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be a fourth kind kingdom on earth, which shall be different from all other kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, trample it, and break it in pieces. Now, do you get any of them four things that that man said? The Antichrist will come from a future nation? That's a stretch. Of course he will. <laughs> a nation will be with the ability to dominate and destroy the world. Now, he's going to devour the whole world, so we'll give him that one. It will be a superpower with nuclear capability. It doesn't say that. It just says it will trample it and break it in pieces. And then he said the national symbol of the nation will be an eagle. There's no eagle in that verse. So how in the world can this man quote that verse and say that's what all that means? So you've got to be careful and read behind, even this preacher, read behind to make sure that the words match what's being said. I believe that there will be a literal Antichrist, a single man that will rule the world after the rapture of the church takes place. But I'm not going to sit around and worry about taking the mark of the beast because I'm going to go up in the rapture and I'm not going to be here when that takes place. And honestly, even if I did, if for some reason I'm wrong and the rapture takes place in the middle of the, of the tribulation or the end of the tribulation like some teach, I still am going to be informed what I'm taking. I'll have to worship the Antichrist and forsake our God. So 
Don't worry about the mark of the beast. You'll be given opportunity to decide if you're going to serve the Lord or serve the Antichrist. If you do, miss the rapture. I'm going to be honest with you. I have a hard enough time doing simple things that the Bible says that I have no doubt about the meaning of what it is. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Man, I have a hard time with that sometimes. I have a hard time loving some people. I have a hard time forgiving some people. I have to really pray and pray and pray. And sometimes it takes me a while before I can forgive somebody. I have a hard enough time with the scriptures that make a lot of sense that are absolutely clear. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Thou shalt not covet. All of these things I understand and it's black and white. It's so simple. I'm going to focus on the things I know that I know that I know that the Bible says to do or not to do. Those are the things I'm going to work on. I'm not going to worry about the Antichrist and I'm not going to worry about the mark of the beast. I'm going to warn others not to take the mark of the beast and not to fall down and worship the Antichrist if they miss the rapture. But for God's people, we can rest assured we don't have to worry about that. We'll leave greater minds than mine to argue about who is the Antichrist. But know this, there is a real spirit of Antichrist, and it's here. It's operating in our Congress. It's operating in our Senate. It's operating in our president. It's operating in every local government. It's operating in, in, in every state government. We're seeing it rising up with groups and people and protest groups and, 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 and all types of things that are going on in our nation and our world today. We are seeing a spirit of Antichrist. One of our missionaries is uh, having a difficult time because their country is basically forbidden any missionary to come in that's not a citizen of their country. And it, and it blows my mind the rights that they've lost. And, and this one missionary has been there for about 17 or 18 years, something like that. And, and, and their rights in that country are being trampled on and trampled on and trampled on. They have to pay thousands and thousands of dollars just to be able to stay in the country for the sake of preaching the gospel message of Jesus Christ. What is that? That's a spirit of antichrist that's coming against the church. And if you don't believe in the next four years that we're not going to see our rights trampled on, you're living in a delusion because there is a real spirit of antichrist that hates the church, hates Christ. That's exactly what the word antichrist means. Anti, against Christ, against Christ, against the Lord Jesus. How do you combat that spirit? You pray. You pray for protection. You pray for the leaders. You pray that the, you bind those spirits over those uh, leaders that are in our country. You pray for them that God will reveal himself to them and that they will, they will be under great conviction for what they're doing. And realize this, no matter what they do, greater is he that's within me than he that's within the world. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you ready if the Lord came back tonight? Are you ready if before you fell asleep, the rapture took place or in the middle of the night, the rapture took place and we're all caught up together with the Lord? Are you ready? This week, one of my friends, husband, about 40 years old, roughly, Died with coronavirus. We saw last week Robert Harris died. We saw yesterday one of my former church members lost her baby, eight months old. Got up that morning, the baby was dead, unresponsive, and then it died later on that day. Folks, we've got no assurance of tomorrow. We've got no assurance. One of my uh, family members Got up to shave here a couple years back. Got up to shave that morning when he went to the to the uh, mirror. Dropped dead right there in the bathroom. 
No ability to repent, no ability to do anything, just drop dead. You don't know if you're going to have opportunity to get right with God. So you want to do it right now while you know you can do it. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't even wait till bedtime. You do it right now. I'm going to pray a prayer. And if you're not right with God, I want you to get right with God right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we repent of our sins. I pray, God, you'll forgive us right now of any wrongdoing, any wrong thinking, any wrong actions. In the name of Jesus, set us free from all uh, influence of the devil. We believe that you died for us, Jesus. We believe you rose from the dead. We believe you're coming back for us, Lord. Forgive us of our sins. Come into our heart and into our life and save us by your power. In Jesus' name, thank you for saving us. Thank you for forgiving us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. I hope that uh, this was informative to you, and I pray that God's uh, will will be accomplished in your life. This Sunday, we'll be online again. We'll be online until the middle of March. Uh, we've got so many folks that are passing in this area from the coronavirus. And we've got a lot of elderly people within our congregation and, and folks that are, have underlying health issues. And we want to make sure they're safe and that they're okay. And for that reason, we're doing online until the middle of March. But this Sunday, online, on YouTube and Facebook, I'll be preaching a message called A Spirit of Fear. If there's one thing God's people are attacked by, it's a spirit of fear. So make sure you tune in 11 o'clock Sunday morning. God bless you. We love you. If you ever need us, give us a call. In Jesus' name, have a blessed and wonderful rest of your week. Amen.